What is going on, guys? I'm going to make you a short little video today because I didn't really get anything out last week and I'm still struggling to get something out this week. So I just want to give you guys a little bit of an update. Enough of me. Let me show you what I'm working on here. Boom. Got the Banshee up on these buckets. What in the hell? So I'm kind of like doing a little hack here. I need to do a little bit of adjusting on this clutch. My God. Oh, that just looks so good. But anyways, uh, if you guys watched the last video, you can see in here, right up in there, is our Magura hydraulic clutch setup. Now, if you watched in the last video, you saw we did a comparison of the basic cable-driven clutch versus the hydraulic Magura, and there was a significant reduction in clutch pull. So while that system worked well, I hopped on the quad. I wanted to make a little video for you guys showing you you know, just what it feels like with that hydraulic clutch to really feel the difference. You know, that's really where it matters. And um, it wasn't quite disengaging the clutch. So I pull in that clutch and it was dragging a little bit and I couldn't really, you know, shift gears that way. So I have to do a little bit of an adjustment. Um, and I'm not sure it's on the actual hydraulic setup. I think I need to play with my clutch free play because it's a different setup. You know what I mean? We had the cable on there before. So it's, you know, it was kind of expected that I'd have to do something like that. So the reason that I have the Banshee up on these buckets is because my idea is that tilted this way, the oil will go into the other portions of the motor. And I don't know if you guys can see or not, but the oil is absent. So it kind of ran backwards and it's all dry in here. So I can pop off this Lexan glass. I don't have to take off the whole clutch cover like you would if it was stock. And um, that way I can easily get to our clutch free play adjustment, which is a screw right in the center there. You guys will be able to see it once I pop this Lexan glass off. And hopefully we can get this thing working nice and smoothly and we'll test out this clutch and we will see how much better it is than the basic cable driven system. So you can check this thing out. Man, is that easy. You can see the action in here. So that just needs a little bit of an adjustment. All right, now I'm gonna be really careful with this because I've never actually taken this cover off before. I have a feeling that these are not very tight. So I'm just gonna take it easy and kind of see where we're at with these. Yeah, these are literally barely even snug. I kind of suspected that, but I just wanna be extra careful with these. All right, now this should just pull off. Wow, I'll tell you what, that makes taking these covers off to check for any kind of clutch wear or replacing your clutch super easy. Not to mention, you can actually take these six bolts out and take that cover off too. I just didn't want to do that. Um, I wanted to do the Lexan glass this time. All right, so you can see the lockout assembly in there. And um, I'm not sure if you guys can see down in there, but you can see the oil. Now, what I plan to do is adjust our free play right in here. And I'm gonna show you real quick when I pull this clutch, you'll see the action. You see it moving just slightly. Now that's not enough to disengage the clutch. Now what I noticed is right about there, right there, starts to pull and I'm already pulling the clutch halfway. So that definitely needs to be adjusted. I'm just not getting enough pull. This thing looks really cool. You can see in there, the oil is in there. We have successfully removed our Lexan glass and we can adjust our clutch free play without having to take off our clutch cover. Really, really easy. No new gaskets needed. Got this rubber gasket that goes around the outside. So I'm just gonna wipe that down, wipe the cover down, and we'll be able to screw that Lexan glass right back on. So what I'm gonna do is take a 12 millimeter wrench, break this jam nut loose, and we'll play with our free play until we have a little bit more action. And then I can throw our cover on and we'll see if we're good to go. All right, so we will break this loose. A little difficult the way it's set up. 
All right, now this is a little bit more difficult than I thought it would be. Now that we have this lock up clutch set up on here, um, the area with our pancake bearing and our jam nut for our free play is recessed slightly, so I can't get a regular wrench on there. I could bend one and make it work, but first I want to try this. This is actually a bleeder wrench, so it has like a socket on there, and then you actually hook a hose up to this end, so when you break, hose, break um, loose a bleeder, the fluid runs through the hose and you can put that in a, you know, a cup or something. So I'm going to try this. They do make extensions for these, which would make it perfect, but I don't have the extensions. So I'm going to see, this does go on there and hold on to that 12 millimeter. If I can get this screwdriver in here and just break that loose. And I don't know if it's going to work. I don't want to force anything here. Uh, I, I don't know about that. All right, well, that didn't work, but I actually have this custom wrench here that I bought directly from Yamaha. It's made specifically for this job, so this should work nicely. Boom, fits on there without a problem. You can get our screwdriver in that hole. Wow. Could it be any easier? I just don't think so. All right, so now that that jam nut is broken loose, I can adjust our free play. And I can see the clutch arm moving as I'm doing this. Unfortunately, you guys aren't gonna be able to see that, but I'm just gonna have to take my word for it. All right, now I took the jam nut off because as I was turning this screw to tighten down the clutch, the pancake bearing started to spin, which I'm not sure if you guys can see that. There's really no way to hold that. So what I had to do was take the cable off of our actuating arm, which relieved the pressure, and then I brought the screw in, put the cable back on, and I'm going to show you the action right now. You'll see it has a little bit more, and you can actually hear the plates disengaging. And I also tested shifting the gears. It shifts much uh, easier, even though it's in place. Uh, it does feel like it's a little bit easier. So you can't really tell until we try it out. So I'm going to put that jam nut back on. And we'll throw our Lexan glass cover on and we'll try it out. We'll use our tool directly from Yamaha Racing. Go. Now I can put our Lexan glass cover back on. I'm just barely snugging these guys. If you go too tight, this waxing glass is really easy to crack. All right, guys, well, if you can't tell, it's a little bit smoky in here. I actually went and tested it out without you guys. I know, I'm sorry, but it works. So, unfortunately, I don't know if you guys can see this or hear it, but it just started pouring rain, like literally right now. So, you know, like what the F. So we can't do anything right now. Obviously, we can't take the Banshee out in that shit, and it's, uh, it's dark anyway. So I'm going to take you back, actually I'm going to take you guys forward to right now. And it is nice and sunny out. So it actually did rain all day, well not all day, but a good majority of the day. So the grass was wet and everything, but we got a really nice day to take the Banshee out and at least just cruise around the neighborhood and see what this clutch feels like. My god, this is such a beautiful quad. I really do love this thing and I just don't ride it enough, but I have good news guys. I do believe I'm going riding this weekend with Stupid Fast John and I'll be taking the Banshee. So let's get this thing fired up.
All right, guys, so hopefully I have some decent audio quality here. I'm trying a different setup, and I have the GPS hooked up. Not like we're gonna be doing anything crazy already with this thing idling here. I had a couple people walking around the neighborhood give me some nasty looks. You guys that follow me, you know the gig, but let's see what this feels like. Oh, man. That's smooth. That's it. Remember, I gotta keep it under 25. Well, that was awesome. Talk about night and day difference. That clutch feels amazing. It feels just like a regular clutch on like a stock bike, really. I wouldn't say it's easier than stock, but it's also not harder than stock. And um, I think it needs just a little bit of adjustment. If I two finger the clutch, um, you could feel like a slight bit of drag. When you're driving, it felt okay. But if I put it in neutral, at idle, you could feel the bike pulling just a little bit, like it was the uh, clutch was just dragging just a little bit. So a little bit of adjustment there, but overall that clutch setup is definitely worth it. It feels amazing. And um, I'm hoping that I can get the speedometer up on this footage. I checked on my phone and an ad popped up in the middle of uh, filming my phone screen. That's how I get that speedometer up on the screen for you guys. I put my GPS on, leave the screen on and I record it but the uh, recorder that I use does have ads and it popped up. And unfortunately, I didn't get it all because it's just a recording of the ad, but I have a screenshot of the final GPS and um, it says the top speed was 69 miles an hour, which is crazy. I didn't think we were going that fast. I wasn't really doing anything crazy with it because like I said, um, with the people around here, I can't really do that kind of stuff. But you know, it uh, definitely turned out really well. We'll see if maybe the, um, the GPS stuff worked on the GoPro. Maybe I can, you'll be able to see the, what speed I was going and whatnot. But that wasn't really what this video was about anyway. But all right, I'm, I'm rambling at this point, guys. Now, if you guys are running the same hydraulic clutch setup that I am, let me know your experience in the comment section below. I sure as hell am happy with the one that I got. Now, I got a couple DMs from guys telling me that they are running the cheapy kits. You can pick them up on eBay for like 20, 30 bucks. And, you know, they look like they're pretty good, but I've never actually run one of those. But guys are telling me that they have really good experiences with them. So if you are using one of those, let us know in the comments section below. It's always good to know, you know, experiences you guys are having so we can help each other out and find out, you know, what's junk and what's not. Please remember to give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. That really helps me out. And remember to comment and share. And also, guys, I will be taking the Banshee out this weekend. Stupid Fast John's going to be there. We'll see if we can get some cool shots going for this thing. It's about time. You guys definitely deserve it. And until then, guys, I will see you in the next video. Have a great weekend. Peace.